Guys, welcome to Order Welcome to the Izzy's. Good morning. As you can see here, we are working on some exciting things. So the last time we talked, we were still trying to decide between host scale or in scale. Shockingly, weirdly, we have decided to go, mainly because of our space upstairs, it's fairly small, at least starting. It's a fairly small space. We've decided to go with the in scale. So based on that, we have a five feet by four foot space just to begin with upstairs. So I'm using this program. It's called AnyRail. I'd heard of it on some forums a long time ago and I made a mental note, but it's called AnyRail. And basically it's literally for making train layouts and it's amazing. I'm an absolute noob when it comes to it. You can see all the different scales here. So we went with N and I started researching all of these different companies and it seemed like I saw Kato mentioned a lot. I'm assuming that's how you say it. It's not like something weird like Kato. Watch it be Kato. Oh my God, it is pronounced Kato. You guys, yo, it's a Japanese company. Sikitsio Kinsoku Kabushu. Man, Japanese names are awesome. Legit awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think that this is what we're gonna go with. I really went back and forth on what kind of track because I don't really, I, I, I like the raw tracks where like I have to do all the, the ballasts and stuff myself. But at the end of the day, I think we're going to go with this, at least from the beginning. I mean, I'm not going to lie, the ballast or whatever it's called, it does look pretty good. I think I'd be pretty stoked on it. I was really close to deciding on doing these like make your own ballast type tracks, but I started reading about like electrical conductivity and soldering. And I'm like, guys, at the very beginning, at least for now, I don't want to do any of that. That sounds intimidating. And that's a project killer for someone like me. That's a project killer. So we're going to go with Kato Unitrack. So if you go up here, you can actually click on Kato, Kato Unitrack, and then like every single piece available is over here that you can uh, like piece together a, a track with. So that's what I've been doing. It has taken me days to come up with this. It is ridiculously hard because with Wooden Railway, there's like, there's wiggability. That's not a word, but you know what I'm saying? That it has some, has some movement to it. You can kind of cheat the angles. You can't really cheat the angles, at least not that much. So my idea is well, you could add new rolling stock or whatever right here, and it would enter the line right here. And then this is the loop. And it's a long loop, goes around. And you see these little sections right here that are green with like little hatch marks. These you can actually see for the 3D view are totally bridges, which is awesome. But what I have to figure out, and we're gonna do that today, is we have to figure out how to do grading. Because obviously, I mean, for wooden railway, these like little bits like here with these sharp ramp ramps up would totally work. We made those all the time. Triple decker layer train tracks are really small. That's the beauty of wooden railway, but we can't do that with like these. So in order to get to like this height, for example, we need to take a very long way to get there. But that's part of the fun, right? Texture. What? Whoa. Whoa, there's texture options. Oh, that's really hard to see anything. Oh, I love that texture. That is our dude. And I think for the track, I'm actually going to make some of these elevations even more extreme, at least right here. Maybe right here. But I get limitations with this program. I don't know how to do some things, but this is basically just to guide a starting point. So I know what kind of plywood bones to build, what to order for pieces. It's exciting stuff. And guys, I just have to reiterate how much of a noob I am because I know that there's people who dedicate their whole lives to these model trains and you're probably watching this screaming like, oh my God, he's mispronouncing Kato. He's doing everything wrong and that's okay. This is how we learn by failing utterly and completely over and over and over again. Creating a smooth slope video. Yes, please. I've watched this four times, but man, I forget. Oh, it is dark. My video is dark. I don't know if it matters. Okay, you select the connection where it starts. There's a direction of slope. Wait, what? I, the slope percentage is three. Okay, that seems smart enough to me. Babe, you want to stop talking while I shoot, huh? I'm shooting live. Okay, if we go to 3D view, it's looking really good aside from these death drops. We don't want too many death drops. So this is the view looking from the front. We want this to be the max, the max height. So we're gonna start right here. So let's go back to our 2D view. We're gonna grab this all the way to like right here. I feel like these should be mega elevated. This one too, this one too, this one too, this one, and this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one. We're still elevated. We're super elevated. We're like three or four inches off the, off the top. 3D view. Yes, 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 yes. We're getting there slowly. This is a disaster. That's just a death trap. 
but we are so close. This is looking really dope. Guys, that's fascinating. I cannot get, like this slope goes all the way to this switch. I don't want it to go all the way to this switch. I want the slope to continue to right here but I don't seem to be able to do that. But I also don't think it matters. I think we've gotten close enough that I could actually start building this thing and ordering the pieces. Um, I can just disregard that deviation. Cause dude, this looks really, really cool. And again, like I'm gonna make this valley much deeper. So I, I, the next step is I need to make a plywood table and then I'm actually gonna make the bones. I think there's varying ways that I can create the elevations, but I'm gonna do it because I, I'm a woodworker and I have a shop. I'm gonna make it with, with uh, plywood, I think. We'll see. Before I cap it, I did notice there are a few comments on this last video and I am gonna go over them. That loco guy says, please like this comment so that they see this. I see you, my dude. Be aware you have to clean the tracks for any model train after a bit of running them. Did not know that. Maybe that's why they're so kludgy last time. So years ago, people thought that Bachman's larger steam loco motives would be super reliable, but because they had nylon gears, they crack and break, causing the locomotive's drive system to completely break and seize up the locomotives. Make sure that you're cautious with whatever you buy and whatever you're getting into. That's good to know. That's a good call out. Whatever, band, uh, whatever brand you're buying from has a good history with their model trains. Good call out. I will do my research. Many brands were not great, but improved over the years. Um, take a cloth, put some rubbing alcohol on it and scrub the track and locomotive's wheels with it. Um, to be honest, my personal favorite is host scale. Bro, me too. Thanks for the comments. I do appreciate it. And I agree. The host scale is like my guy, but I, but it looks like Super Mario fan. 6428 kind of read my mind. He says, it depends on the space you have. Um, I would love to see host scale, but if you don't have a lot of space, end scale is the way to go. Yeah, I think that I agree with you. And that's why we ended up going with the end scale. We just simply don't have enough space, at least for this initial run. If we fall in love with it and it's like amazing, then maybe I can like take over the living room or something. Oh, that would be kind of crazy. Thomas Tank and Play 23 mentions, why don't you just do both? End scale is recommended. You can easily get the engines you have and end scale as well. Bachman made an end scale Thomas, end scale Gordon. Yeah, so a, a large majority of these comments want host scale, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be about uh, like what, what space we have. Even though we might not reply to every single comment, there's quite a lot of comments. Um, I do read all of them, so keep them coming. All right, guys, until the next installment of our train journey, um, have a good one. Thanks for watching.